welcome back to Tempus Verbum. So today we'll be talking about three different topics, uh, the attention economy, uh, dark patterns, and gambling um, manipulations. So we'll start with the attention economy, and uh, a nice introduction to the topic, if you're interested, is to watch The Social Dilemma. It offers a biased views and a bit exaggerated um, about the topic and uh, through social, social media, but it's still interesting to watch uh, in order to get uh, a grasp of the, um, of the topic. So after you have actually a lot of sources, if you just type attention economy, you get like a lot of sources that's gonna bring you information. Uh, in Forbes, for example, one of the articles is mentioning something that I find quite interesting because it relates as well to gaming, which is the internet is pay for play and always has been. And this is quite true because the, the attention economy means that if I grab you for the longest, if I keep you for the longest, I'm going to have as much data as possible on you. The more data I have on you, the more profitable I'm going to become because I'm going to uh, um, sell you personalized data, etc. So it's something that's really important. Attention economy is, uh, has always been there and it's just growing and growing uh, every day. Uh, one thing here that can relate to gaming in this uh, article of Memory AI is that you can see all these notifications, for example, here on Gmail, uh, on your messages, on your calendar, etc. They bring you back to an app. So that's something that games are doing for a long time now, and it's optimized. So all these actually notifications are personalized for you to actually give you a proper reason to come back to the game. So it could be like in old games like Farmville, etc., to actually make you come back to get your crops. Uh, it could be in other games like Empire and Puzzle, for example. Uh, come back to get your food, to get your um, iron, etc. So that's something that's quite uh, popular and something that's uh, sometimes overdone. Like, uh, let's say, like attention economy could be um, indirectly with season passes and battle passes that you have in game, where actually, in, in order to complete all the missions and to go further in the game, you really need to actually come back every day, come back every week to do all your quests, etc., to get enough XP to actually complete the passes. So I think that's maybe probably the, the biggest that arised um, lately in, uh, in gaming, these battle passes, that most of them will require you to be logged in almost every day to complete them for free. Uh, let's say for free for actually uh, most of the reward for the paid pass, but actually uh, without skipping stages. So that's something that's, uh, that's quite a big thing and it's really important because games will try to keep you as much as possible in one game so you don't go to the others, you don't spend on the others, uh, and actually you increase the retention in that game. So attention economy in gaming yeah, is mo mostly for retention and eventually, of course, uh, monetization. So this is just quick and shows about the concept. So that was for attention economy. Now if we skip to dark patterns. So dark patterns are actually like patterns that are put in application. Again, it's uh, on the internet for ages now, uh, but it's a lot in gaming as well. It's gonna be color coding, for example. And you see it really in UI and UX. Uh, it's something that's gonna drive you to, make, to do something that you are not supposed to do. Uh, so for example, it could be like actually shaming you into making a choice and uh, pushing you to make the other choice. Or like here, for example, in Dark Pattern website, you can see the button, add to network or skip this step. Skip this step is not, there's no emphasis whatsoever on it. Uh, however, add to network is a button. So here, the only thing that you're going to see in the screen and that you want to, uh, to click on is going to be add to network. So a lot of things uh, that are interesting here with the types of uh, Dark Pattern. So Dark Pattern could be like the, um, the Roche Motel as well, which is something that uh, dark practices and dark pattern where it's really easy to get in the situation. So for example, let's say uh, Apple or Amazon subscriptions. Apple subscriptions now are easier uh, to get out from, but at the beginning of Apple, like, it was really hard to actually cancel your subscription. You had to go to some menus that had no direct relationship with it. Uh, Amazon is like one of the worst as well. Like, you have to go into sub menus and sub menus and sub menus to actually like, reach to finally, okay, cancel uh, my Prime subscription. So you have a lot of things like that that are actually dark patterns that, again, lead you to do something you do not want to do. But uh, if you think about um, the book Thinking Fast and Slow, it's gonna be, they target your system one. They don't want to engage your system two. They target your system one to make decisions that uh, don't awake your subconscious. So that's really important. Uh, you have like, for, and in a lot of um, games and application again, it's re removing the no button, that's no no anymore, it's remind me later. So it's actually like pushing you to actually press OK because you don't want to be reminded later, for example. So a lot of things uh, like that, that actually remove uh, the choice on your side. So there's a lot of uh, people working on that. So you have ethicalgames.org that you can check out, uh, Celia Podent um, website and book as well. So really interesting, like there's a lot of people working on that uh, and uh, really being vindicative about it. Uh, so I'm not an expert myself on that, but it's something that I'm 
fighting against, let's say, at my level, uh, if that makes sense. Now, if we go into monetization, I uh, just want to talk about loot boxes because it's something that not everyone know about. Of course, like uh, core gamers and gamers will know about loot boxes, but a lot of people that may have watched the first video um, are not uh, familiar with. So, just wanted to talk a bit about that. So, it's something that you can see in the top developers. So, here, for example, on Appany, you can see on the right on top grossing game. Uh, in US, you have a lot of developers that are using that. And uh, you will see it as well in um, uh, in AAA games on console, on Steam, etc., where Blizzard, unfortunately, and a lot of top publishers, I mean EA, of course, uh, are actually pushing that uh, like crazy. And at the moment, in game as a service, the main way to make money. So this is getting a bit sad uh, in the way it's working. So you have this video uh, as well from Game Theory that's really interesting, and actually they touch like a lot of concepts uh, that um, that trigger that. And one of the main ones, of course, is going to be the manipulation of dopamine. So the, the dopamine is going to really actually direct you uh, to, to use the loot boxes more than you should have, or like more than you were willing to at the beginning. So what's really interesting and a bit scary at the same time is that and they touch it actually in, um, in the game theory uh, video, but it's the Skinner box uh, research. So like the, ex the experiment, uh, is about a pigeon and a button and actually the reward, if you get a reward or not when you press the button. So to be honest, something that I'm using with my dog, <laughs> I don't give him a reward every time. Because if you give a reward every time, then the dog gets bored. But actually, like, you give a reward one time and not the other time, so actually like, there's an excitement about getting a reward. Uh, what's a bit scary, uh, if you look at here, the partial uh, reinforcement schedules, is that all these four points, a uh, fixed ratio schedule, uh, variable ratio schedule, fixed interval schedule and variable interval, interval schedule, sorry. This is <laughs> basic practices in free-to-play. Uh, so actually, like, players are treated as pigeons, <laughs> and uh, this is how actually we trigger uh, people coming back at a certain time, people like launching loot boxes at certain intervals, etc. So it's a bit scary to see that at the beginning of free-to-play, like, things were really high level, and the more we went free-to-play, the more a lot of con psychological concepts are applied into making more sales, uh, which can be quite uh, dangerous because people don't know about that. Uh, a bit more recent, we have actually a uh, science uh, research that, uh, and with a paper that proved kind of partially that uh, loot boxes can link to, to gambling. So one thing that's quite uh, obvious that 92% uh, of the children that play video games uh, open up to 40% uh, loot boxes. So uh, each children are exposed, like you know, like that means that half of the children are exposed to, uh, to loot boxes. And that's, uh, that's quite a big deal because this is a phenomenon that's going to keep on increasing. So eventually this 40% is going to be 60%, it's going to become more. So you will have more and more people that are exposed uh, to these uh, dark practices. Uh, and again, like this is quite a normal one. 5% uh, of gamers generate half of the entire revenue for the boxes for that developer. So this is quite normal. Again, like you are between 2 and 5% of your players who are going to pay. And from these 2 and 2 to 5%, you will have 20% of these paying users who are going to generate 80% of your revenue. So this is quite a basic uh, rule in, in free to play. Uh, but still a bit scary, especially when you talk about uh, loot boxes. So here I'm not going to go into the entire article. Uh, this is the big uh, the talk um, website where you can find it. Um, what's quite interesting here is again like it's a combination of well-known psychological technique that actually leads you to open all these three boxes, etc. Uh, et and one thing that's really scary is that the dopamine is released not when you get your awesome reward. Uh, this is excitement. This is not actually dopamine. It's released again like in the Skinner um, box uh, experiment. It's released when you push the button. So everything that leads you to pushing the button uh, is not going to be, um, let's say, fully rational. It's going to be driven by emotions. Uh, so that's a bit, um, a bit scary again. But again, you have like uh, techniques like price, uh, price anchoring, etc., special limited time offers. So a lot of things like that. That uh, eventually, like, it would be good uh, if we can try to reduce that in gaming in the future. Reduce that uh, in the mid for games that are going to be upcoming. But also through the Valorant website where you can go rate the games and make sure that, um, uh, that these games actually are not uh, using these practices, or if they are, also actually uh, ask them to stop, kind of, indirectly. Okay, thank you everyone uh, for watching this video. Please like it and subscribe to the channel for more videos in the future, and go to tempsvarum.com uh, if you have time, please. Have a good day, everyone. Bye.